our channel. As you can see today, we actually kept our promise and we are here with the bus and uh, we've been working a lot adding on some new things. Today we're going to focus mainly on how we added the bathroom to the back of the bus. And um, in case you haven't watched our past videos, in case this is the first one, um, this shuttle bus actually came from Minnesota and it was a bus that shuttled people from the airport to a hotel. So it has, and you'll see this a lot in shuttle buses, it has a wall that kind of has this little back closet and then the rest of the bus where the people sat. And um, we watched a lot of other videos of people taking apart their shuttle buses. And I think you said that you saw several videos where that wall was actually made out of metal. And we could have removed the whole wall, but we didn't really want to because we liked using this for a bathroom. Um, but we didn't want to cut a door in the wall because the area is so small. <laughs> Here comes the car. Um, the, air, the area is so small that if we put a door in, we would lose a lot of important footprint either inside or inside the bathroom or inside the bus as the door swung open and closed. And also, if you followed us before when we were using the, um, the van you can see behind me, um, that didn't have a bathroom in it and we ended up building a pool behind that housed the bathroom. So and when we originally built that, we actually had a bathroom in the back and we actually put in a pocket door, which would have been an idea for this. We would have cut a hole in, in that dividing wall, but you still lose, you still lose square footage on either side of the the pocket door. Um, anyway, when we, we were considering the removal of that divider wall, um, for us it really was not that much of an inconvenience uh, as other people would have to leave the bus to go to a, to a restroom or an outside bathhouse. At least we knew that it's always available. It's always clean. It's always open. And it's right behind us. We literally can walk out the door um, 20 steps around the back and you have the bathroom back here. Um, not much different than the pool behind that we use for a while. So, this and works by the way, if you are interested in seeing how we had a, a bathroom in the back of our of our travel van behind us, I'll link that in the description below. But let's move on to this bathroom here. Thank you. All right, ready? Mm -hmm. This is my black water tank. This one's never been never been used before, so I'm having to create new holes for them. They come without any holes in them, so. Uh, Go to Harbor Freight or somewhere and pick you up just a simple pole saw set, and that's the size there that, the, that this pipe will fit in. Um, this piece here, if you're interested, I can give you the link to Amazon. That's a rubber grommet. We'll just include it below that, in the that, description. That you just can insert in. They come in a couple different sizes. I got this in the three inch for three inch plumbing. Also got an inch and a half for my drain vent. But I'm using the three inch both on the front of the tank, which is where the cutoff valve will be, the the open and close valve. I'm also using it over here which is where the, uh, the commode will be, be mounted. By the way, the way these uh, hole saws go together, it comes with this piece for the inside, slide that in, and for the larger size, you have to use this on the other side, and then this threads up. And I'm just running it right through my Craftsman 19-2 cordless drill. That does just fine. Um, the only thing you have to do is because it is cutting through plastic and it does get hot I had to take my uh, box cutter or last night I had a I just used a, a drill bit and scraped around just to make it good and smooth You need to have all the burrs off. Just be careful using a knife You don't want to create a burr or shave it or make it misshapen. You want it clean on both sides. There's none of this None of this material. Be careful not to get your hand cut But once that's good and clear you can pop the rubber gasket in and I'm also using um, some black silicon uh, sealer, like a rubberized uh, gasket material, and I coat both sides, uh, as you see here, I coat both sides inside the channel, inside the tank, and on the outside, I put that in. This pipe pushes it tight, so it actually does pretty good seal just from the just from the rubber. This is a rubber piece instead of plastic. I went ahead and put the seal in it as well. And this is not high pressure, but still you don't want it to, to leak. Okay, here's what we have in the bathroom so far. Um, you can see the big hole, that's where the toilet is gonna hook in and go right into the black water tank. And that hole over there is the vent. Um, so what I'm doing now, there's a black water holding tank I've installed. Oh, down here. <laughs> and this is the vent, the black water holding tank, which is under the floor right here. And I'm gonna take this vent, I need to get it up. And I was going through the ceiling of the van, of the bus, shuttle. 
<laughs> We're so used to saying ma'am. Anyway, um, there are numerous braces, not just these tubing braces, but there are also steel slats that run through. And I was worried about trying to clear those without getting too far out into the compartment here. The vent, there's really no room to vent inside the walls. That's why I was checking. It's too narrow to vent inside the walls. So my plan is now, I'm just gonna take this vent, follow, elbow it over, follow the side wall of the van, and just 90 degree it out through the back wall of the, of the shell and uh, put a, a weather cap on the outside. And that's just providing vent for the black water tank so that when it drains, it'll drain properly. All right, I drilled a pilot hole just to test this wall. Um, I believe I'm clear if I pull these panels up so I can see my electrical, I think I'm clear of the electrical, but this is a neat little Harbor Freight tool. I wish I'd had this earlier, but I'm able to look inside the wall. What I'm looking for is anything that resembles, anything that resembles wiring or anything else. And that's the exterior wall there where that, see the bit touched it. So it looks like to me I'm all clear. That's the back of the carpet, but it looks like it's, uh, looks like I'm all clear there. Yeah, right. and people are probably going to be wondering why we're not taking all of this down and putting up, you know, more permanent wood roof and whatnot. And we probably will eventually, but, um, right now this just works for us. We're more in a hurry to get on the road with this thing than we are making it beautiful. So we'll probably come back later and, um... Plus. Make it beautiful. Plus, you know, we've we've learned too with the with the um, bus with the van that you do something, you try it out, you realize you don't like it. So we'd rather build what we know and try it, and then come back later when we're sure and make it permanent and beautiful. Yes. All right, go ahead. You can go. Okay, so real quick I'm going to give you a little tour of what this little bathroom area looks like and of course you can see first things first we're having to use a step ladder and eventually we want to have some steps that either drop down here or well yeah probably drop down here don't you think yeah like like RV stairs so we can come in and out but for now and you can see too we have some trim work to do and you know we need to pretty up this door but um, when you come in you can see first things first is the sink, which we haven't plumbed the water yet, but gives you an idea. And then on this side, you have the RV toilet and the, um, what's that? Yeah. Vent, thank you. <laughs> the vent that goes up there. And then on this side, we have um, what's going to be uh, basically our, our garage area. So we, Randy has these um, really neat Repurposed bread. <laughs> yeah, re repurposed uh, bread racks. I think they're bread racks. So those are hooked in tight, and then we can, as we start putting stuff in here, like our outdoor fireplace and our outdoor chairs and um, anything else that we need to keep that hasn't that isn't actually part of our living in the in the inside goes here, and we can kind of put the shelves in wherever we need them. So that gives you an idea of what's going on. And we're gonna put a big mirror right here. We haven't decorated, obviously. We're still just in the, the laying out of the, of the stuff. But now that you have an idea of how this looks, I'm gonna let Randy climb inside and give you a detail of how he did it. Hey guys, let me show you a couple things we did today. Um, we got the sink installed. Believe it or not, it's actually a real <laughs> sink. It's not working now, it will be working. I'm gonna climb up into the back of the bus. A buddy of mine does kitchens and baths and he ended up with this somehow it's almost like a novelty. Look how cute it is next to my hands. See how this small thing. it is. I don't know the exact dimensions, but it is tiny. It's real porcelain. It's actually a pretty nice sink. Tour a bit. It's actually a pretty nice sink. I'll let you know how it works. It has the. It's just a single single water temperature. You set the temperature that you want, or you can just run it cold. But it has the push button. And Jamie and I are debating whether or not that's a good feature or not. Um, on one hand, it if you're tempted to leave the sink running, that will actually save water. But on the other extreme, if you use it for a few seconds and this runs for, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds, we haven't tried it yet, you actually should be using more water. So we'll let you know how that works out. But anyway, that's what I want to show you. We did put a, uh, a Thetford style RV uh, potty, for lack of a better word, in the back of our closet. Um, it's funny that. <laughs> That we decided to put this in the closet. When we uh, we first we were trying to make a decision on doing this, um, our first thought was this is a closet in the back of an airport shuttle. Um, it would be kind of cramped for space. When we started measuring this thing, we realized this is actually a 30 by 93 closet. And when you think about it, most RV 
bathrooms are about that size or even smaller. We measured even bathroom stalls for that matter. Yeah, yeah, we measured, and this is actually the plenty wide. Um, what I really want to show you though is we I'll, I'll talk a little later about how we actually installed that through the floor. But what we did today, we went ahead and completed the vent. Um, just to make it simple, we just came up through the floor with the vent out of the black water tank. This is an inch and a half PVC. We went up, and instead of going out through the ceiling and going through all the complications of of doing that, we just decided to get the highest point of the rear wall and elbowed it outside, um, made up our own little outside uh, cap for it until we buy something. Um, it actually should work fine, so we'll probably leave it like it is. It's just all PVC, it's kind of a homemade cap. But um, that vent's really essential. If you've ever used one of the small portable RV style toilets, if it's not really vented, which those aren't, whenever you go to flush it and you, you pull the lever and open up the little valve in the bottom, if it's not properly vented, as soon as you open this up, you're going to get, uh, there'll be some air escaping and it actually bubbles up and it can actually splatter out a little bit if you open it fast. Um, so one way to combat that is, of course, to have a vent so that will keep any air pressure, let the air escape as the, the water drops in. So uh, that should prevent the splatter. We'll let you know how that works. And I apologize for the amount of mildew on the outside of the, the shuttle bus. It needs a bath. Um, also, you seal up all this trim. We're, we're going to replace all of the the, uh, the seams. But that was just a makeshift cap that I made. Um, that's the, the outside where the inch and a half vent pipe comes out. And uh, I just simply turned it, elbowed it down, put a cap on it, and drilled some holes just to keep big things from going in the cap. Okay, guys, I want to show you real quick how I uh, plumb and set up this blackwater tank. That's a, a standard valve. I bought that at uh, like a camping world or something. Um, I can't remember the price, it wasn't that much, maybe 30, 40 bucks seems like for that cutoff valve. But I'm going to slide on my back. Okay, let me show, show you, you this from, from the back side. Um, it's worked out pretty well. I was actually able just to hang, using a big uh, the U bolt, I was able just to hang the plumbing right under the edge of the shuttle there, under the trim, and it seemed to be plenty sturdy. Um, just standard PVC plumbing, it's just really just a simple couple series of slow bends into the back the black water tank and what's interesting is this black water tank um, it is a uh, it has a number on there anyway it's 24 inches by 48 inches vantage point of this guy it's kind of hard to show them right on the ground but this is 24 by 48 inches and it if you notice it fits snugly um, under the side of the bus 48 inches and it fits right up almost level with the uh, the body so tucked away nicely um, the way I mounted this you don't just see it from this angle I don't think the way I mounted this all right guys was, as you can uh, see I don't know if you can tell um, that that tank actually it's interesting the tank has a, has a gradual slope down um, the top, of course, is level with the, with the bottom of the van, but as a tank for the tank to drain, it has a gentle slope down, which happens to be the exact slope of the body of this shuttle. So it actually fits quite nicely right under the edge. That's a better point or not. And it tucks away completely. And the way this was mounted was uh, first one under and and uh, fastened a three-quarter inch sheet of plywood under the whole bottom of the chassis and that gave me a good mounting surface and just hold the tank up and uh, put screws around the perimeter of the tank it has a, a flange around the edge that you can attach it so I just shot in a bunch of screws around the edge that holds it in place and then of course we plumbed everything cut a hole and plumbed it down from the uh, from the top so thanks again for stopping by and for visiting our channel and following along as we work on the new shuttle bus. I hope you enjoyed this clip of how we put in the bathroom and if you have any questions that we didn't answer in the video, please feel free to put them in the comments below and my husband, who is the brains of the operation, will definitely get back to you on that. Also, uh, since we talked about that we used to have a bathroom in the van and then we moved it to a pull behind behind the van, if you're new here and you haven't followed along and you're interested in either one of those videos, I'll link them in the description below. Um, but join in next week because we're going to be working on the inside of the, the bus. We're going to do the kitchen and um, the living room area and 
put in, maybe not next week, but one, the next thing we're going to do is put in a second seatbelt up front so I can ride with him in the front and not have to ride in the back on the couch. Um, so subscribe if you haven't and click that bell notification. I'm trying to get these out every Saturday, but we might get ambitious and put them out sooner. So hit that bell notification so you don't miss anything. But uh, like this video if you did, and we'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.